What's that numbers, Larry? A look at their activity, and as you can see, Etienne is a very, very busy heavyweight. And he is especially busy with his power punches. The average of over 50 power punches around is really astonishing for a heavyweight. Rules of the bout with a run official ringside scorer, Jesse Harold Letterman. <laughs> the Lawrence Glebe Clifford the Black Rhino ATN fight is scheduled for 10 rounds, non title, using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including. The tenth and final round, Jim. All right, let's go to ring announcer Jesse Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, Nevada, courtesy of TVKO Pay Per View, we go to our third Budweiser bout of the evening. The three judges assigned ringside are Dwayne Ford, Dalby Shirley, and Al Siciliano. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jay Nady. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a special heavyweight bout here tonight, scheduled for 10 rounds, and somebody's O oh, must go to young undefeated heavyweights. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and weighing in at 220 pounds even. His professional record, a perfect 18 and 0 with 13 victories by knockout from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Here is the undefeated Black Rhino, Clifford ATN. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with blue and white and weighing in at 235 pounds. His professional record, also perfect at 12 and 0, including nine knockout victories. Ladies and gentlemen from Hartford, Connecticut, presenting the undefeated Lawrence Claybay. Fighters, come to the center, please. You guys ready? Do you have any questions? All right, obey my commands. Remember, it's the belly button to the hip bone. Defend yourself at all times. Let's touch gloves now and go to work. Jim, just to clean up a little business from our last fight, um, Eddie Woods, who is the manager of him, Ivan Robinson, leaned over the ropes and told me that he was going to retire Ivan Robinson now. We'll see whether Ivan Robinson will allow himself to be retired. Etienne the bell, start the fight. is the fighter all of us have uh, anticipated watching. He seems to present the picture of, of a potential big time heavyweight more than Clay Bay, who is a boxer, mover, counter puncher, but a very sophisticated one. And uh, we'll see if Clay Bay can get through some of the incoming coming from Etienne and vice versa. Sophisticated is a good word because if Lawrence Clay Bay has an advantage to bring to bear here, George, it's his terrific intelligence and the way he's made himself into a knowledgeable head? boxer. He is all of that sophisticated. And what he would like to do with the Rhino, Clay Bay, let him throw his shots, jab him as soon as he finishes. Make him think, hey, you can't make me move, and don't give up the ring at all to it. Don't let your back touch those ropes. Make this big man think your power, your awesome look doesn't bother me. And he you... took up boxing, did Lawrence Clayve at age 26 to lose weight. Right. And throughout his amateur career, even right, when he went to the Olympics in 1996, he says he never thought of this as a stepping stone toward a work possible out, professional out. boxing career. It was all just a big adventure for him. He waited a year after the Olympics before he actually began boxing as a professional. Thus, the ingenue status at age 34 for Clayve. Yeah, that's a good time to start boxing. I don't like to see the heavyweights have a long career. Only so many punches you can take. Start late, finish as late as you like. 
But one thing you pointed out in the past, George, is that heavyweights don't really reach the top level of skill, by and large, unless they've had significant amateur careers. Of course, even starting late, Clay Bay did have that. I like to see them start even in the amateurs, really. Etienne is doing some really heavy body work here. Yep, he's going to work on that 53 power punches per round average that you talked about, Larry, because body shots count as power punches, and Clifford Etienne has come out to try to take Lawrence Claybay's body in round number one. You know what? He throws all the good shots, and you find him backing up. That's not what you want to do. Well, Etienne, you establish at 30, your power. Etienne should establish his power, keep Clay Bay on the ropes like this, make him think he's being beaten. Good left hook to the body. Watch your head. War of wills here in the first round. Etienne's normal day-to-day -day trainer is a guy you probably don't know named J.C. Davis from Eastern North Don't Carolina. Bang your head. Don't He's an official head. trainer who uh, helps him prepare for fights and then comes in and is in the corner during the fight is the much better known Don Turner, who is, of course, the trainer to Evander Holyfield and Michael Grant, and you've seen him in a lot of big heavyweight moments. So Etienne follows in a long line of Don Turner-trained heavyweight contenders. Already, Clay Bay has given up the idea of standing outside and spearing him with his jab. Before a shot in that corner, but come on, don't do that, all right? Get the best of on him, okay? Nice deep breath and relax. Yet another Goosen, incidentally. Larry Goosen, okay, Joe's Larry. brother, okay, okay. is the trainer to Lawrence Claybay. No more on the ropes like that. I don't mind you going back there, bringing them back there if you're going to get that left foot in front of Bob and the Weavers, okay? Combination's going to work your pace. Fastly. You understand? That's right. Work your pace. And use the legs to scoot away from it, right? Scoot around it. Punch him, scoot around him, low. <laughs> Keep the pace going. Every round is the last round. By copy box numbers in round number one, Clifford Etienne was right on his average. He threw 53 power shots and landed 20 of them. Clay Bay, 14 out of 37. Much lower activity rate than Etienne in the first. And you heard Larry Goosen say, no more going to the corner. Clay Bay has got to be to use his boxing skills, no doubt about it. He has better balance. He has a better left jab. Keep it a boxing match. He's got better head movement when he uses it. Quicker hands as well. But this is work out, work out, guys. Heavyweight work out boxing. And you have to be awful good to be able to deal with a force like Etienne if you don't have a big punch. ATN starting to make his strength and power punching mean something in the fight. Clay Bay shows you his quick hands. Hey, Clay Bay needs something to excite him. Get upset. This is a puncher also. He can take this guy and land equally with power punches, but he will not be able to do it by absorbing body punches this early in the round like he's been doing. Two rounds, he's been able to get some body punches. The black to receive too many of them. Clifford Etienne told us that he was a nerd in high school. Oh, right, Larry? Work out, work out. Yeah, but right, just a, a mention here, he's bloodied the nose of Clay Bay. Just much the harder puncher. Yeah, Don't hold he him. has an unusual background, work. comes from a solid family, was a good student and nerd as a kid grew up into a being a really good athlete a star linebacker in high school recruited by top schools uh, then he got into a jackpot when he Whoop. went out with some good right, right hand there he was in prison for 10 years where he learned to do some of this well this is what larry goosen did Ooh, what what He's laying on the ropes and allowing him to hit him in the side. Standing against the ropes and allowing ATN to fire away. And Clay Bay is going to get a talking to from his corner when he goes back. But sometimes when the stronger man imposes his will, it's just impossible to stop him. And Clifford ATN is trying to physically take over the fight. The blood is now streaming from the nose of Clay Bay, who lands an effective counter there and gets a moment of breathing room. Every fight, every round like the last round. That's what Connor told him. And the big rhino doubles up on his left hook. That's strange to see a heavyweight doing it. 
Goes down Watch low and comes right back with another on top. Watch your head. His strategy is still in mind. In his two performances on HBO's KO Nation against Clifford Kozer and Lamont Brewster, Clifford Etienne was just physically overpowering. He's trying to do the same thing to play that here. Who stuns him with a counter right hand? Etienne shaking his head as if to say, how could I be so stupid as to fall for that? That brought the crowd to life. I'm in a stool. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. You know why you're getting hit? You know why you're getting hit? You're not moving your head. After every combination, move that damn head, baby. Come on. Come on, you all right. You might have pulled that round out with that last story, but come on. All right? Okay, listen to me, champ. You have to stay off the ropes. You stay right. low. You He's can't right. be okay. straight up. That's number one. Number bend two, that, bend that. you have to yeah. bump him. Okay? Bend. You can't let him just punch a simple bump and then punch off. Grease the lips. Okay? And move a little bit. Step around. You ain't got to dance. Move and start working the hands. Copy box numbers for round two. ATN 35 out of 69. That means he landed more than half. Landed 34 power shots. Play base 16 out of 55. It was a copy box mismatch. Well, he was definitely wobbled by Clay Bay in the last five seconds, seven seconds of the round. How will it affect him? Will he keep coming? Mohammed's old. Muhammad Ali's old photographer looked at me and said, whoop a dope. <laughs> <laughs> the illustrious Howard Bingham. What you want to do if you got a guy on the rope for a long length of time, jab, move around him. You can do the same thing as a jab. When he's up against the rope, had another story there. Back off, nothing wrong with that. Well, he did it just there, George. He learned something. But you heard Al Mitchell between rounds, echoing in Clay Bay's corner, what Larry Goosen had said the round before, you can't go to the ropes, you can't go stand in the corner. Stop doing that, and Clay Bay's already been here with his back against the ropes one more time in the third. See, the rhino gets the better of it when the fight is in the middle of the ring. Vicious Keep it up, back, back away, the make the guy come to you. Stay away from the ropes, he gets on the rope, jab him and step back just a little at a time. Now Clay Bay backs into a corner again, and here goes Etienne. Keep your head off there. What is Trying to apply the hammer. What is impressive about Etienne for a relatively inexperienced pro is how he goes to the body. You don't see many young heavyweights doing that. And that's what that's going to pay off for uh, Clay Bay because he's able to land some good, solid left rights to the body. Clay Bay obviously waiting for an opening to try to lash out against uh, uh, lash out again. And the uppercuts are starting to get through the guard, and the left hooks are going around the glove, and ATN is starting to really punish Clay Bay at close range. And here comes Clay Bay with his own rally as he waits for ATN to expend his energy and turns the situation around with right hand counter punches. A bleeding Lawrence Clay Bay once again trying to turn the tide against Clifford ATN. You're not going to get the referee to, to examine a fighter when he suddenly throws Whoa. shots off the rope like that. Referee Jay Nady, big, strong guy, able to handle heavyweights very well, standing away and allowing Clay Bay and Etienne to fight in a phone booth. Is Etienne throwing too many punches and punching himself out, George? Well, you would say ordinarily, but this guy's built real solid. He's not that tall. <laughs> Get low whenever he wants to, so he can control us. But steps to the side, he's in control. Clay Bay has taken an awful, dangerous chance to absorb so many punches early like that. Yeah, he's had two thrilling rallies, but by and large, he has been hammered throughout most of the bulk of rounds two and three. Shots for Clifford Etienne. Blood all over the mask of Lawrence Clayburn. Yeah. Also, Larry. blood on my score sheet. Ten. Larry, two, three, remember. Well, my shirt is clean. Don't blow I'm pleased to say. Larry, if you're going to go to the ropes, I don't mind you doing it. Just don't stay there the whole freaking round. You want to talk to me? Huh? Ten-second round. You keep pumping it. 
moving the head. He punch, 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 move the head. You understand? Punch, 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 move the head. Larry, we're going to look at replays first of the uppercut rally for Etienne and then Claybay's retaliation. This is very good work inside. Again, a fighter who has had only 18 professional fights going downstairs, taking whatever Clay Bay gives him, but throwing an awful lot of punches. Clay Bay trying to have him punch himself out. That round, Etienne was aware of what Clay Bay was trying to do. Round four of a schedule 10. Harold, how do you have it scored through three? Okay, Jim. I got it 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing. The Black Rhino, Cliff at ATN. By the way, this blood all over me. In any case, I don't know. In the second round, Lawrence Clay Bay really caught him sleeping. I mean, you know, Clay, uh, ATN was pounding him and, and he stopped him. Lawrence Clay Bay nailed him, but too little too late. The third round, the Rhino just hit him so off and so hard, you couldn't take it away from him. So three to nothing, uh, Cliff at ATN, Lawrence Clay Bay has to box and get off those ropes. Now the Rhino is doing the old Joe Frazier. He's got the guy against the rope, but he's just not throwing shots. He's doing a little dance there. Got a little rhythm to it. Touch you every now and then, then go left and right. That's smart. Oh, uh, Clay Bay's got quick hands. ATN's not bad himself. And if that chopping right hand had landed a moment ago when ATN threw it over the top, it might have knocked Clay Bay down through the canvas. There's a good right hand by Lawrence Clay Bay. And a right hand to the body by Clay Bay. And now they're back in the center of the ring. For Clay Bay, it shouldn't have turned into this kind of boxing match. It should have been a boxing match just like he's doing now, not a punching exhibition as he's turned, let it allow, allowed himself to let it turn oh, This into. is an area where Clay Bay can win the fight. We've Keep never boxing. seen Clay Bay fight quite this way in some of the fights we've seen him in. He, he's, he's showing that he can, he can war as well as box. Couple of former outside linebackers. ATN, when he was coming out of high school, was recruited by, among others, Barry Switzer's Oklahoma powerhouse. Clay Bay was recruited by four-year colleges up east after having played linebacker in Hartford. Clay Bay was a reluctant athlete. Didn't really like football all that much. Etienne was certainly going to go to university and play football before he got sidetracked by his criminal violations. Clay Bay has no, has no idea that the Rhino had this much stamina. And he'd be able to keep pursuing him and not get discouraged. Watch your head. Now for the Rhino, if you're not going to throw shots and you're not going to keep your body moving, get away from the guy. Don't just stand there. Imagine we've had nearly four rounds of heavyweights firing like this and not a single clinch. Jay Nady hasn't broken him up once. George. There he is, standing again. Rhino is powerful puncher, but don't stand around. Eddie has hit him a lot of big, heavy, clean shots. Can you tell if he's a real puncher yet? He's a real puncher, but you can't really give him a good description because this guy can take a punch. Play big. Between rounds four and five here, moments ago in David Tua's dressing room, referee Joe Cortez. He's firm, but he's fair. Here's what he had to say to the New Zealander by way of Samoa. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, let me just see uh, the hair. Okay. You know, I could use some of that, you know? <laughs> you know, I could use some of that. <laughs> okay, guy, good luck. We are a little concerned about the holding. A little concerned about the holding. It's the be all and end all for them. <laughs> you know, I touched David's hair at our meetings yesterday just to see it. It was very soft. I mean, it's a. It's a bird's nest. Uh, I don't know what will fly out of there. But at the same time, you wonder with two fighters who, whether the hair will get in the other fighter's eye inadvertently. Yeah, and let me correct uh, New Zealander by way of Samoa to Samoan by way of New Zealand. It starts in Samoa, then he goes to New Zealand, and uh, that's where he won his Olympic medal. In round four, ATN slowed down some. 24 of 59, 22 of 38 power shots. Clay Bay only threw 40 punches in round four, but landed 19. The accuracy and quickness of his counterpunching readily obvious here. And ATN's strength is just as obvious. Put your head in there. Stop, stop. 
Now, you got to watch your head. AGM's corner's got to make certain they pace this fighter now. He's done his best he could do as far as power punching is concerned. He's put it on the guy. Now you pace him and make him keep this guy protected oh, himself and win the fight. Work, work. ATN just reached up and pressed a, a glove to his nose and blew out a nostril, which a if he were suffering more damage from Clay Bay would be a mistake. Yep. But he'll get away with it here. Clay Bay was able to get in a good left foot that time for the first time in the fight. That's why I said, now you want a corner to pace you. Don't tell you what to do, just tell you how many punches to throw per round, how many not. Look for power shots when they present themselves. Lebe landed a counter right uppercut, likes it, came back with a lead uppercut, landed it, now has Etienne on the defensive. And you wonder, is the Black Rhino beginning to tire just a little bit? He's starting to throw his punches in shorter flurries and try to get longer rests. And Clay Bay's trying to take advantage of those moments of inactivity. This is when your corner comes in handy. You don't bring him along just to bring you carry your role. It's the instructions that the Rhino gets from this point on. Don't waste anything. You've hit, you've hit him with the bigger punches already. Now, bang his head with plan your work and work your plan. Clay Bay fighting fire with fire in this round. That's not good for you when a guy like the Rhino beats on your body and head like that. It's not good for a career. George, did you get bad instructions from your corner in Zaire, or did you ignore good instructions? They didn't give me any instructions. It was like, hey, we have to road waiting, George. We have to road waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up and get it over. Of course, the good news is across the way, Angelo Dundee wasn't really sure what the heck Ali was trying to do, because he wasn't in on the joke. Tell me about it. But it's now, the, this is the days of good instruction. Good job, guys. Thank you. ATN tries to generate that rhythm again. As George said, dancing in like Joe Frazier as he gets ready to attack on the ropes. What you want to do is stand next to the guy, move your head left and right, bob and weave, touch him. Don't waste your power. He's got his defense set. And he was able to take your big shots early on. They're not going to do much damage to this late in the fight. is seizing the moment more and more frequently now, and this fight is getting interesting. Meanwhile, Lennox Lewis's dressing room, Joe Cortez's instructions to the champion. Thing with the head, also both of you be very careful with that. I don't want you holding behind the head. I don't want you holding and hitting. That's all illegal. Want any kidney punches in the back? Watch out for the low blows. Any low blows, I'll give you some warnings. If I think that they're intentional, there'll be points deductions. Be very careful with that. If the mouthpiece comes out, you keep fighting. When it's a low in the action, we have the mouthpiece replaced. Accidental headbutts, we'll go to the scorecards after four completed rounds. There's no saying by the bell, like I said before, in any round, including the last round. Okay? Any questions here? No questions. Any questions? Okay, good luck to you. God bless. Lewis, of course, accompanied by trainer Emmanuel Stewart, whose overall record in heavyweight championship fights training three different heavyweights is 10 wins, no sir. losses, and one bogus draw in New York. Joe Cortez, Jim, told me that he was a very tall bantamweight in his youth, and he fought a lot of small guys, and there were a lot of natural clinches that went on because of it, so he's very well aware of what he's in for tonight. He's number one as far as referees are concerned in boxing today. The best referee on the scene. Watch your head. In round five, a CompuBox festival for Clay Bay, who landed 18 of 40. ATN dipped to 11 of 62. He's turned southpaw, Clay Bay. Clay Bay turned southpaw right there. Another little nuance in his game. ATN tries to ignore it and just bust right Ooh. through him with the hard power punches. That's where you want your power to go. If you're going to waste it, Waste it in the body. Watch your head. He's slowing now. And you saw in the last round how Clay Bay was able to use that to his advantage, finding the moments when ATN went flat and flurrying rapidly to pile up a point impression in the minds of the judges. Uppercut by ATN. Clay Bay effectively slips it. Clay Bay truly want to be against the ropes when he comes in with those punches. Seem to be non-effective when he's in the middle of the ring encounters. 
when his back is against the rope, he seemed to have a better grip of the ring. As we reach the middle rounds of the fight, and Clay Bay is more and more competitive, I'm thinking of the word that you used, Larry, way back at the beginning. Sophisticated. He weathered the storm early. He saw those opportunities he might have to become the aggressor, and now he's punishing Etienne with counterpunching brilliance in the middle of the ring. Well, he's making his stand right here. He's going to win the fight. He's going to have to let Eddie know he can't come in wading in like that without any consequence. The Rhino looked in the first couple of rounds as though he was going to blow Clay Bay right out into the cheap seats. But Lawrence Clay Bay has shown a chin, determination, and an understanding of what he might be able to do to change the course of the fight. Well, he called himself a cop. Too much punishment, though. Yeah. You think so? No, I don't like it. Boy, you when you lose a draw, it's not there. good for a fighter to take that kind of punishment, uh, especially when you voluntarily do it. Uh, he called himself a chameleon who can adjust to whatever Etienne does, but he's adjusting by, by getting stepped on. Now, you Watch see his head. back is against the rope. That's the position Clay Bay to want to be. It's hard to adjust to a left hook that lands flush, and ATN landed about four of them in sequence in that last rally along the ropes. Now, ATM has thrown a lot of shots. Clay Bay is going to get him before he can get his breath back. Now, Clay Bay has been trying to steal rounds. When he hears the woods clap five or ten seconds before he comes on and tries to steal the rounds. This is it right here, dude. Okay. Come on, nice deep breath. Get the legs out. Stretch them up. Dan and Larry, this is this fight's for you. It's there. You could suck it up, dude. Gotta be able to suck this up. Okay, get that out, let him breathe. Deep nice deep breath. breath. Larry, if you keep doing what you've been doing out there in the center. If you want a war, you'll get a war. Alright? If you want a war, you get a war. But I want you to war here. Stand in front of this guy when you're trading the money. Bing, 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 and go. Follow what I'm saying. Whole body. You follow what I'm saying on the outside. Strong, getting strong. Now let's take a look at a replay from the center of the ring. Well, Ed, Eddie said he likes to be in the blender. Look at that. Well, Clay Bay oh. says, okay, oh. let's get in the blender and mix it up. <laughs> Eddie likes to say, I make no secret of what I'm going to do. I'm coming at you. These guys sign a contract to fight me. They know what they're getting. They're getting 12 rounds of full-on aggression. Survival of the fittest. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, I got it 59-55, five runs to one, Cliff and ATN. You know, Jim, I just think Lawrence Clayby is fighting his fight without question, fighting uh, ATN's fight. And I don't know how in God's name he's taking this kind of punishment. He's been bleeding since the early rounds. He's all busted up. And a one of the best right hand of the fight for Clayby. He landed a big shot. You land two of those and the night is over. That's barely missed this time. The one thing about good punchers, it's hard to get those guys to get in shape. But they know in the back of their mind they can end fights early, and they don't want to run straight, they don't want to run long, they want to spar long, hit the bag long. They're just not in good shape of stamina. Watch your head, concerned. watch your head now. So a momentary lull. There's only been head. one good one like that, that was Joe Frazier. I mean, he would say he'd come out smoking, he would keep smoking. And, of course, Joe Lewis. Well, we're finding out something about Etienne here, which is he's taken some pretty good pokes and come back. Yeah, he still has the presence of mind to grin at the ringside commentators during a lull in the action to let us know that he's okay. And he's following instructions from his corner. Throws his shots and steps his whole body away to the side, left or right. That's a sign that you're in good shape when you can follow instructions. Clay Bay waiting for Etienne to mount the action and countering hard with the right hand. Another yes. chopping right by Clay Bay. At some point, Clay Bay may want to understand that he may not be able to knock this guy with one good shot and go on and try to win the remainder of these rounds. Well, he better win them all. Because he dug himself a big hole early in the fight, allowing Etienne to dominate the action. He's hurt. Clay Bay countering again. And again, Etienne is wobbled by the assault. Plenty of time in the round. Well, what you always wonder about an aggressive fighter is what happens when the incoming comes. Break! 
Etienne, you could see him thinking there, do I hold? Is this the moment when I hold? Am I badly enough hurt to hold? And finally he reached out and grabs. And now he steps back away and gives Clay Bay more chances to come on. Now Etienne says, okay, I shouldn't be embarrassed by holding. I may need to do it. And he grabs him again. It's really interesting to watch an inexperienced fighter think his way through that, George. Because you don't want to hold in front of the crowd when you've been so good through much of the fight. And now here he comes again. Well, good job, guys. We know one thing, he's a fighter. How good it remains to be seen, but he's a fighter. This is what I want. Come on. Come on. It's a fight now. God damn it. It's a fight now. We'll pull you though. It's a Give fight it now. Give that what I want. Look it up. Here you go. Come on. Give it that other one. Just spit it out. Look, when he's throwing, you got to move ahead and use the defense fast. Don't give him six. You understand? Go ahead. Okay. Right perspective. One. Tie him up after you get north. You punch him and then let him score back. <laughs> All you have to do is time him up, bump him. Al. Taylor, this is your fight. If you pressure him, you're in better shape. All right, let's take a look at the right hand by Clay Bay that seemed to hurt ATN, Larry. For the second time in the fight, at close quarters, clean right hand stuns Etienne, but he came back. Interesting fight. Round seven might have gone to Clay Bay. Needs to win the rest of them in all likelihood to forge... A close, your head. nearly even bout on the scorecards. Don't put your head against his. Jane Nady tells ATN not to put his head on Clay Bay, and ATN moves all the way back. Clay Bay looking for ATN to give him the opening with which to counter. <laughs> Boom, like that. A oh, good left hand uppercut by Clay Bay. <laughs> Etienne's got to learn that when he throws that right, he's got to keep his left up. He's, he drops the left when he throws the right, George. He's got to bring that left back, whether he miss or not. See? He's, he moves his body good. He's not in front of him after he finishes, but you got to come back with a hook. You can move your legs. You can bring a hook back. Go right, left. Now you go with the hook. Etienne can look at the videotape of this fight for months and learn from the mistakes he's made and the good things he's done because there have been plenty of both. Another hard right hand counter by Clay Bay. ATN momentarily ducks as though he's hurt and then comes right back in to press the action. And a good counter right here by Clay Bay. And ATN keeps going and Clay Bay hurts him with the uppercut. Clay Bay is showing us something in this fight also. He's, he's elevated his stature in this fight. And ATN's wobbling a little bit. His legs are slightly stiff as he comes off the ropes and misses Clay Bay. Now ATN's starting to get a little light back in his legs, and Clay Bay goes back to the ropes to wait and watch. That's what you do. You get right back on him. You say to him, yeah, you've done your stuff, but I'm back. Murano is back. Clay Bay is dealing with adversity and a lot of hard punches quite well. He's... He's showing he's got something, but he's laying on the ropes too much. Nah, not a good idea. Don't bang heads. You lose so much strength and power for your knockout punch that you won in the last round. He had not been hitting in the body with those shots that he had been hit with earlier. Those shots that he landed on the round would have dropped him. Yeah, but Clayman does so well in the center of the ring, George. Why doesn't he just spin away and go there? Well, I don't know. Something has happened. It's not his corner's idea. You can believe that. Is he trying to save his legs for punching? He got himself in a hole, and he's going to have to pull something out. Right. Good left jab by the Rondo now. That's the way you want to do it. He's That's up good against idea. the rope. Jab him. You don't That's have to right. throw your sh power shots. Bingo. Bring some more variety back to you. Don't keep man. throwing the same thing over and over and over. And now, energized by that, ATN lands a combination. Clay Bay, like Larry said earlier, last of the round, he started trying to throw. That's a non-existent last minute of the round for Lawrence Clay Bay, and it changes the momentum of the fight again. Nick Charles had a conversation earlier with David Tua. Let's go to Nick and see what's up. With David Tua, who's waited for this moment all his life. David, he got crushing one-punch power. You got a granite chin. Why are you the underdog? I love being the underdog. Um, you know, I know that uh, they're not giving me a, a chance to win the fight. 
but uh, that's all right. I work hard for this moment, and uh, I have waited a long time for this. It's here, and uh, I'm going to go out and get it. You said you'd gone through a checklist through your mind in these moments before you step in and the bell rings. What's running through your head? It's all done. You know, uh, I've gone through a checklist right now, and uh, there isn't anything that I haven't done to prepare for this fight. In terms of him getting him to fight down to your level, where he's never had to do that before against anybody, how do you do it? Well, I'm just going to have to fight in my own height. You know, I don't have to go up to his height. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to going out and do what I got to do. Final thing, Lennox Lewis has a TV monitor in his dressing room. What words do you have for him? I love you, man. <laughs> David Tua fighting for the biggest title in the world, the heavyweight championship. How about let's get it on? And there are the numbers on the Harold Letterman card as we arrive at the ninth of a scheduled 10. In the last round, Lawrence Claybay stopped throwing punches for the latter half of the round, wound up throwing only 22 punches in the entire round. Clifford Etienne brought his energy level back up through 56, landed 24, and probably stopped Claybay's scorecard momentum in the bout. Etienne still seems a little bit wobbly on his feet, particularly here in the center of the ring. Looks as though Claybay could take advantage of the bad balance that ATN seems to be exhibiting at this point. ATN can get past this Frank. test. Let me tell you, it's going to be clean sailing for a while. This is about the most skill he's going to run into in the heavyweights for a long time. That's an excellent point, uh, George. Uh, as he continues his way up the ladder, if he can get past Claybay, he'll be fighting other raw prospects like Frank. himself. Guys who aren't quite as finished in the art, at least until he gets into the top ten. Yeah, but, but you know, guys, he's going to fight stronger don't grab, don't fighters grab, work out of there. and who are going to try to exploit his aggression. They see that on twi two occasions in this fight, Clay Bay, who is not known as a big fighter, has really what? hurt him. Yeah, and not known to you, Larry, Clay Bay has a punch. Well, it's never shown before. He's not known. He's known more as a boxer and a quick-handed no big man. I've seen some no shots. Head, I've seen him knock out some heavy hitters. I mean, put it on him. Well, he uses his timing, his quickness. You know, it's the punch you don't see coming that hurts you. And Lawrence is an excellent counterpuncher, as you can see here. This guy can get this one. Let me tell you, from a fighter standpoint, all you got to do is stay in shape to have somebody match power with power. And Clifford Etienne loves to learn. He's a gym rat. He'll work and work. His trainers, Don Turner and J.C. Davis, say that he understands he has a long way to go and is willing to do the hard work to climb the mountain. Guys, not only that, but he needs 36 hours to get his degree from Southern University. Isn't that good news? In business management, incidentally, so that he can uh, take care of his money. Clay Bay starting to land body shots late in the fight. Something you should have done early on. Yeah, body shots in the earlier rounds would have made more difference. This is the next to last round. The fight is scheduled for 10. And after that, we'll be setting up the heavyweight championship of the world between Lennox Lewis and David Tua. I'm no rocket scientist, but I definitely got to say. You want to? I know. Yeah. Okay. That means all out. Go for it. Whatever happens, happens. Okay? Listen up. The jab opened the kid up, yeah. and the shots is there. And when you're in close, don't aim the hook at his head because he's ducking down. Aim the hook. Okay? This is the round we want. This is the round we want. He's going to come out. He's going to come out like a tagger. You buy it down, okay? Beat him down. Don't trade. Reel the shots underneath and over. Hey, you go for it. I don't care how freaking tired you get. You keep going. You gotta have a okay? big round. You got three freaking minutes. Use these legs. Use them legs. Use the hands. Bing, 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 well, if you listen to the corners, this is going to be one hell of a round. God, I love boxing. <laughs> I love the urgency. I love the man-to-man. -man. Harold, how do you have it going to the tent? Okay, touch up, guys. Good job, good fight. 
Seven rounds to two. Clifford the Black Rhino ATN in an absolutely great fight. Jim, I got to tell you, Lawrence Clive got some heart, but I thought he just tired badly in eight and nine. The Rhino went back to pound it on him. There's no way you can take those rounds away from the Rhino. He hits too hard, and, and that's all there is to it. So basically, Clifford ATN on power punch, winning his fight 88-83, going into the last round. Playbase corner told him it doesn't matter what happens, go all out. Even if you're knocked out, go for it. And he He's listened to it. him, and he caught Clay, or he caught ATN, I should say, with the right hand there. And the Rhino's corner told him what to look for. He knows, but Clay Bay has come out and seized the initiative early. And now Clifford ATN turns him around and puts him into the corner and hits him hard with two big left hooks. And they trade left hook shots. And he steps to the Work side, out, which means there. he still Work. got some endurance here. He's still got strength. <laughs> A lot of time can go by here while Clay Bay waits for the Rhino to give him an opening. Wait is the deal. He's been waiting all night. Yep, too much of it. Too much wait. Counter punches have a tendency to wait too long. Hard right hands over the top by ATN. Left hooks by ATN. He's winning the 10th round. Trying to seal the deal against Florence Clay Bay. Those are big shots. I'm not sure Clay Bay can weather this. These are huge shots. Clay Bay standing and taking. Jay Nady yells at Clay Bay, you've got to punch. And Clay Bay does. Clay Bay got him. All they gotta do is finish up. I'm not sure he knows. Go for it. If someone is calling to get him, go for it now. You got him hurt. Boy, ATN recovers quickly. That there. reminds me of Evander Holyfield, the way he recovered. Conditioning. Uh, conditioning. I'm not sure Clay Bay's going to make it through here. ATN is just storming it. When he got hurt, he recovered in less than 10 seconds. He waited and uh, saw two minute body punches, Clay Bay did. And in the last couple of rounds, just don't have that needed endurance. Let's hope the championship fight has this much sustained toe-to-toe -to -toe action, guys, as we have seen some hitting and getting hit between Lawrence Claybag and Clifford ATN. And with 10 seconds to go, the crowd ought to express their appreciation for a terrific performance by two American heavyweights. Well, it was for the moment the heavyweight fight of the year. <laughs> Two ex high school linebackers come late to boxing, showing some stuff. Whether, stuff. Whether or not they can climb to the elite level remains to be seen, but they got the makings. Let's watch some of the action in super slow mo, and you can see the grit and the determination with which these two guys finished the fight. There was a moment there when you thought the fight should stop. He's standing up and taking punches, and suddenly Clay Bay sucked it up and came back. He wanted to finish what he had started. Well, he was obviously aware enough to hear referee Jay Nady when Nady yelled, you got a punch, meaning I'm going to stop it if you don't, and Clay Bay at that moment yeah, came right ball. back. Oh, Harold, how do you man. have it? Okay, Jim. 98, 92, eight rounds to two. Clifford the Black Rhino ATN. Tremendous fight. Great punching. Unbelievable action. It's the third time I've seen a rhino, and it's the third time I've loved him. So, Clifford ATN, 98, 92, based on clean, effective, hard punching. The rhino's a big fan of yours, too. Let's go to Michael Buffer and hear who won the fight. Ladies and gentlemen. What you saw here tonight was two undefeated young heavyweights with the courage to face each other and put their records on the line. And we witnessed one of the all-time great heavyweight slugfests in the history of Las Vegas. We go to the Budweiser scorecards. Dalby Shirley scores at 98 to 92. Al Siciliano has it 99 to 91. Dwayne Ford scores it 
99 to 93. All, pardon me, 97 to 93. All for the winner by unanimous decision, the Black Rhino, Clifford A. T. He closed the show. The man from the Louisiana Bayou landed 44 of 75 punches in the 10th round. Overwhelmingly power shots.